Good afternoon everyone and welcome back again in drug and medicinal herbs session today. I am Dr. Biswas and College of Agriculture, Fort Valley State University. I need to tell you that whatever food we eat, it's not food actually, we eat for our health, to maintain our health. So if we eat bad thing, our health is going to be affected. So all those crops, vegetables we eat as a vegetable or other purpose, it is mainly for our health. So drug comes there when we are sick, so how we, have, we can cure. Like I can give you an example that we are growing our specialty plant crop or at Fort Valley State University, several different types of herbs. Why? Because our students, our community needs to know or familiar with all these crops, herbs for their health benefit. So today, before we go our lab and other experiments thing, I want to tell you about this plants we use at heart. You might know or you may not know that 80% of our uh, drugs comes from the plants. And people are dependent on plants. So if you take the plants as your health benefit, it can help to keep us healthy. Here I am talking about like this plant. This is a spinach. It's a high vitamin A. It can cure our eye problem. So you can see this plant, when we are taking as a vegetable, it is helping us. But you can make drug out of this plant too. So there are the method that you can do. You can see closely the how nice these fruits are and you can see there is a lycopen, you can see red. This is, you can see here in my face, the so red and this is lycopen and that helps us, our health for immunity. So this thing, you can extract this thing, you can find out the quantity of active ingredient. Scientists are looking for active ingredients of various herbal plants that people have been consuming them for centuries. Like this one, Malabar penis, and you see they are growing so nice and we have our research material here so that we can collect, we can educate our students and students can do research on them. And this is another medicinal herb for arthritis and good for them. You can see all of them. So they are growing in hydroponic situation. This is another best method because the environment is controlled. They are growing healthy. We are not treating with fertilizer. So you can see the close-up picture how it looks like. Then once you see that this every part of this plant can be used as a drug every part like leaf this flower every part next you can see you might know this plant is another plant medicinal that we can use our nostril our mint menta so you can use with your you can eat as a your, in, with your food every day at the same time it is very good that this can cure your nostril clear and clear that your cold and even some sort of headache so this thing when you you are taking your mouth freshener you will found that some smell is coming because they have used this plants leaf ingredient in that so point is here you are getting the material clear closed fresh here or you can extract it and produce a drug from here. And if you go that side, here I, that we are growing our some another important herb here and turmeric and it is growing here. You can see this turmeric is growing and we want to see which method it can help 
very healthy uh, secondary metabolite and biomass production of this crop. This is a turmeric plant we are growing now. Point is, it can be grown here 12 months. Means there is no environmental problem here or seasonal variation because we are keeping mostly the temperature it requires for its growth. So now as a student, what you need to do? You need to grow it, you need to extract, you can harvest it, then extract this one and find the quantity of your secondary metabolite you are looking for and then you can use a microliter of that one on your cell line like breast cancer cell line or whatever because it has been reported that it can help to control some cancer cells too. So we do not believe as a scientist that somebody is telling something but we need to do it through so you can test our student needs to do this research by themselves to see that efficacy. So that facility is here. So all this drug from herbs, it is you as a student needs to get experience how drug can be developed from these herbal medicines, herbal medicinal plant. So that is the purpose of our facilities to develop here at Fort Valley that all the students they come, they can develop their own research uh, project and this tree is number one miracle tree. It has been uh, several books it is written and in Asian countries people have been using this one for cleaning their teeth for antibacterial and if you use these twigs then you do not have any gum or tooth problem. This tree from the bark, root, leaf, fruit, everything has medicinal value. So can you close up this one so they see that leaf and this. This is very bitter. Anybody has diabetes, they need to take a couple of leaves early in the morning so that their blood sugar will be go down. And now if you want to develop some drug, what you can do is you can take the extract and put in your medicinal purpose or check the cell culture that how its efficacy. This has been used to develop so skin care. So it takes skin care. Any eczema you have, you can put this leaf extract. It can cure your eczema skin problem. Like animal has the flea in there is far, you can make extract and put in the lotion uh, solution and give a bath to that uh, your pet dog, the flea will be gone. Then this extract you can use in plants that have insect pests problem, you can spray that is organic pesticide. It works as like that. So here these plants can be used as like solution for making uh, controlling bugs on your vegetable crops. Farmers can use that because that can be used as a biopesticide. So now you can see all these plants is very important whether we know or we don't know. Here is the facility we should know. The all drugs come from this kind of several other plants material and like I am using this twig this is this twigs came from this tree and you know what every morning and evening you are brushing your teeth but if you brush with this one like I am doing make your brush and then you brush your teeth like that there will be no gum problem or no bleeding from your teeth you need not to go to doctor that is proof so that is another thing. So everything is there in nature and now you can make a drug or you can use as it is. That is the point. So we should increase our knowledge to know about several plants uses, medicinal uses and herbal this thing. Now I will show you several other 
plant we have in our specialty plant house, okay? Let's go there. This plant is called Amla. Amla fruits are very healthy for vitamin C, for human health, and overall human health. Women like these fruits for their shiny glow face and there are so many medicine drugs are developed from this plant fruits and so many drugs have been using this plant. So that is the purpose to introduce this plant to you all to know what is a amla tree look like. This is Egel Marmelus or Bell tree. There is homeopath medicine on this plant extract and also fruit of this plant is used to cool down in summer time for anybody working in the summer and very good smooth for your stomach because stomach is if your stomach system is good your health is good so that is the thing we have to yeah. so this is again bale or scientific name is egel marmelus Hey guys, I'm out here in the pine tree forest. Um, this is our new farm. And um, last season, we actually had some turmeric and ginger growing out here. So for my research project, my research project involves the quantification, the cultivation, and the antibacterial analysis of turmeric. Turmeric is a medicinal plant that is, um, that is used with food and beverages. It is also known for its high benefits in um, antibacterial properties. My first objective includes locally optimizing its growing conditions. We have noticed that because the turmeric grows underground, the soil composition must be compacted just enough to retain moisture, but also to allow for the growth of each rhizome. This is important when measuring the growth of each finger. Within the soil composition, we will incorporate various treatments including cow, chicken manure, 5, 10, 15, 10, 10, 10, coffee grounds, vermicompost, and others. And we will monitor its growth during the cycle to determine which treatment responds the best to the turmeric. Hey guys, so I'm Elena again, and I want to talk to you today about my research project. So my thesis research project is centered around the plant ginger. Ginger is a highly medicinal plant and is often consumed through the foods and beverages that we eat. So one objective of my research was to better learn how that we can grow ginger in our local community here in Middle Georgia. Ginger is a rhizome that grows underground similar to turmeric. For growth, ginger requires shade, which is why we chose this well shady spot here in the pine forest. So for this experiment, we divided this plot of land into sections which you can kind of see here. And these sections were our beds with different types of fertilizers. The fertilizers that I used in my experiment were chicken manure, cow manure, vermicompost, and then I had a control where I did not use any fertilizer. Hello, Mr. Art again here. One of the many problems that we face, or farmers face rather, in, in traditional farming is the control of not only disease, but weeds as well. Here in this experiment, we're using a weed fabric that controls the the growth of, of weed more readily than any other chemicals or anything else without having it side effects. As you notice here, we have this weed fabric down, and if you look at the surrounding area, how the weeds are compared to the area right here. Also, we use the irrigation system. Though we have the fabric down, the water will actually seep through the fabric and still bring moisture to the plants as well. Hi guys, it's Dr. Samuels. Welcome back to our culture room. So far, we have spoken about the culturing and growing of plant cells. Here I have stevia and turmeric. But as you, as you have heard from my animal science colleagues, animal cells can also be induced to grow outside of their organ in a controlled environment using the proper nutrients and growth factors. So mammalian tissue culture has many uses but is not limited to the study of basic cell biology, cell cycle mechanisms, toxicity testing, gene therapy for non-functional genes, the characterization of cancer cells, the roles of chemicals, radiation and viruses on cancer cells, 
the production of vaccines, monoclonal antibodies, and other drugs, the production of viruses for vaccine production. So as we are a specialty crop lab, we also grow some mammalian cells. that we use for toxicity testing of plant-made compounds. So here I would like to show you two pieces, of, two pieces of equipment that we use. This one I just opened is our incubator that we use to grow our mammalian cells. And here, this is a hood that you have seen Jeff and Daryl working in, but this one is designated for our animal cell work. Thank you for visiting our culture group. Hey everyone, it's Nicole and I'm here in the lab just to give you a brief overview on extraction. Extraction is a process that... Oh, it's changing so fast. <laughs> <laughs> oh my, Elena! Two. Hey everyone, it's Nicole and I'm here in the lab just to give you a brief overview on extraction. Extraction is a process that is used to separate one or more components using one of two phases. Phase one for a liquid or a solid mixture, and phase two for an immiscible fluid solvent. One of the most common techniques that is used to extract volatile oils is something known as a hydro distillation and steam distillation method. Now, once extraction is done, um, the separation of bioactive compounds and analysis can be performed. Now, once this is performed, um, there are many techniques that we can use to actually uh, analyze these bioactive compounds, which is known as the HPLC method. The HPLC method um, is something that Elena can give you more information about. So hey everyone, welcome back again. My name is Elena, and I just kinda wanted to go into more details with you about my thesis project. So the second objective of my project is to extract and then analyze the different ginger plants that I grew. So I decided to extract from plants that were grown in each of my fertilizers to kind of understand if my fertilizers played a role in increasing or decreasing the amount of secondary metabolites that the plants had. So secondary metabolites are compounds that plants usually excrete as waste. They're compounds that are left over after they already um, achieved their different processes. A lot of times these compounds that they have as waste are compounds that we can go back and use for different purposes. So to figure out how much secondary metabolites were in the plants, I decided to use HPLC to analyze my samples. Now HPLC stands for High Performance Liquid Chromatography. HPLC is a process that allows us to separate the different components of a liquid. There are a lot of different parts to an HPLC machine, but to simplify the process, I wanted to kind of go over with you the five basic steps to the analysis. So every machine has a solid reservoir, a pump, an injector, a column, and a detector. You also will have a display screen that will be on your monitor that will allow you to set up your equipment for the different parameters needed for your analysis as well as allow you to see your results. The column is what we call our stationary phase. It can look like a thin metal tube and it's coated with a medium that separates the different parts of the sample that we're trying to analyze. This medium is usually made up of carbon bonded silica. Now there are many different types of columns that you can use, and this will depend on the samples that you're analyzing and the type of analysis that you're trying to achieve. Our column that we use is a C18 column. So C stands for carbon, and 18 is the number of carbons within the chain. So many of you all may have already taken chemistry in high school, and you'll get into a little more details when you go off to college. But this right here is an example of a three ring carbon chain which is known as propane. So you can imagine in our C18 column, we would actually have 18 of these carbons thus surrounded by the hydrogens. Now our pump, which would be the next step, is what pushes our solvent, the liquid that we're trying to use to dissolve our sample, through the column at a steady rate. This is called our mobile phase. This is because this particular liquid is constantly moving throughout our system at a constant rate, so it's mobile. Common solvents that are used are methanol, isopropyl alcohol, acetonitrile, and water. Depending on the type of analysis that you're conducting, you may use one by itself, or you may use them in combination. For my project, I'm using a mixture of methanol and water. So while our solvent is pumping through our column, 
our injector then injects our sample into the column as well. Our sample is analyzed and the different components are separated. The consistent flow carries the separated components to our detector. Once a component reaches the detector, it delivers a voltage, similar to a shock, that responds in time. That voltage displays as a peak, which is similar to the shape of a triangle. And that peak happens at a specific time, depending on that compound. The detector that you use can also be based on your analysis, the type of machine that you have, and the type of samples that you are looking for. On our machine, we use a multiple wavelength detector, abbreviated as MWD. This allows us to analyze our samples at many different wavelengths at one time. So once we finish our analysis, we may have multiple peaks. Peaks can tell you a few different things, but I want to go over two of the most important things that your peak can tell you. So the time of the peak, which I'm showing you in our chromatogram diagram, the time of the peak helps you to understand which component you are looking at. The area of the peak tells you how much of that component is in the sample. So you may wonder, how do we know what time our peak should be detected? So prior to running any of samples, you have to run what's called a standard. A standard is the purified substance of what we're looking for. This helps us to know which component is detected at which time. So for my project, I'm looking for two secondary metabolites in ginger. One of the metabolites I'm looking for is called gingerol. So before I run my samples, I first have to run my gingerol standard, which is the purified version. So let's say I run my purified gingerol standard and my peak comes back at four minutes with an area of two. Now that I have my standard inf information, I can continue to use to run my sample. So let's say I run my sample and I end up with two peaks. So my first peak is still at four minutes. I know that because my standard was at four minutes, this peak rep represents gingerol. But now, let's say the area of my peak is eight. Because it has doubled, okay, hold on, I gotta change this. Okay. <clears throat> so let's say my peak is at four minutes. I know that because it is at four minutes and my standard was at four minutes, this peak represents gingerol. But now my peak has doubled to four. I know that the sample I just ran has doubled the amount of my standard. Remember, there's still another peak here on our chromatogram. Because that peak is at a different time of 12 minutes, I know for a fact that it isn't gingerol, but it could be a different component. There are many different components within ginger as well as other plants, which is why it's so important for us to use tools such as HPLC to figure out which component go into more details about my third objective, I'm going to be testing my ginger extracts through animal cell culture. So animal cell culture is a tool that allows scientists to conduct research that may be difficult otherwise using the entire organism. In my project, I'm investigating whether or not ginger can reduce the addiction to opioids. So opioids are a pain management therapy that's often prescribed to patients. One downside to these prescriptions is that it has a high risk for addiction. This can lead to several problems, and these effects can also be passed down to newborns through pregnancy. So this here is our culture room, where we culture ourselves. Here we have our laminar flow hood that allows us to work in a sterile condition by pushing clean air from the top to the bottom. Over here we have our incubator. So our incubator is where we store ourselves. It maintains carbon dioxide level, um, humidity, and it also uh, maintains a certain temperature needed for the particular cell line that we have. I also want to point out to you our water bath. So this is set at a certain temperature and this is mainly used for our liquid media. This is because due to cells no longer living in the entire organism that they were in, it's important that any media used is already at the appropriate temperature. If that media or those liquids are too cold, it can shock the cells and also kill them. We 
We also have a container here that allows us to keep different tools that we use, such as pipette tips and flasks. Other tools that you may use in animal cell culture that I don't have um, present right here is our microscope and a centrifuge.